So here you are at lesson 7.2 and today we want to talk about this thing called exponential growth and decay and of course some other model that relates to it. You've probably heard of exponential growth and decay in your pre-calculus studies. There I think we just gave you a formula and said hey all these questions that represent exponential growth use that formula and plug it in. But today what I really want to do is show you where that formula came from and it really comes from this idea where mathematical models in which the rate of change of a variable, hint, 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 derivative, is proportional to the variable itself, these actually are quite common in both business and scientific worlds. Now, let me ask us to think about this statement, the rate of change of a variable is proportional to the variable itself in terms of calculus notation. Well, the rate of change is a variable. Well, that's the derivative, right? dy dt. Yes. And that must be equal to, because it's proportional to, uh -huh, k, which is the constant of proportionality, times the variable itself. And that's y. Now, this happens to be a differential equation. So let's go back to what we did last day and let's see if we can actually solve this differential or differential equation by separating the variables. And hopefully you remember from last day, we would bring all the y's to one side and all the other terms go to the right side. And once you separate the variables, our next step is to just take the antiderivative on both sides separately. And then on the left-hand side, hopefully you know this is the natural log of the absolute value of y. And k is a constant where t is my variable, so the integral of a constant is just the linear function kt, and don't forget our plus c. Yes, yes, yes. Now you might be thinking, I want to solve for y. I got it. So we need to then e both sides, so we'll take e on both sides. Right? e both sides to solve for y and what you will see then is you get the absolute value of y equals to e to the kt and I'm going to write this as e times or e to the power of c so once again two exponents being added together I can separate that into two powers so e to the kt times e to the c well e to the c is really just some constant anyways right some constant and remember, the absolute value just gives pretty much a plus minus. So I can go plus or minus e to the constant times e to the kt. Once again, this just represents some other constant. So why don't I just call that, in this case, big C. So here goes C, e to the kt. And you might have seen this equation before in pre-calculus 12. I hope so. And now we've just proven it to you using calculus. So the basic law of exponential growth or decay is this equation y equals to c e to the k t and what do these variables represent well c is the initial value it's the amount of the substance that's present at time t equals zero k is the constant of proportionality so when of course k is bigger than zero you got exponential growth and when k is less than zero you got exponential decay and our variables that are in question here, our independent variable is time, and our dependent variable is y, or the amount of the substance. Alright? So if they ever talk to you about using the basic law of exponential growth of decay, that's this function here, and it comes from actually this differential equation. Okay? So ultimately, this actually comes from this idea of dy dt equals to ky, then you will get this equation. All right, so let's use that for our next examples here. Example number two says, what is the rate of growth of the population in a city whose population triples every 100 years? And assume that the population growth can be modeled by the basic law of exponential growth. So really what I'm saying is, use this equation. Okay. Really what I'm saying actually is, I should be saying dy dt is equal to ky, and then we can then say we're going to use this equation. 
the exponential growth equation. Now we have to figure out the, yeah, the growth rate. Well, what is the growth rate? Yeah, that's the constant of proportionality or the value of k. So how do we do this? Well, if I read this again, it says there's a population that triples every 100 years. Ah, so if I start with the population of C, after 100 years, so that would be my time, my population would be three times as big as C, so 3C. Ah, notice then I can divide the, three, uh, the C out, and I'm left with 3 equals to E to the 100K. And to solve for K, we'll take the natural log of on both sides. And of course, the natural log of E to the 100K is just 100K. And solving, we get K equal to, of course, natural log of 3 divided by 100. And that is actually our population growth. And if you want to change this to a percentage, you can use your calculator, but I've done that already. And I found that k equals to 1.10% evaluated in the years 100. So 1.1% growth. That's manageable. Okay. Now let's take a look at the next example here. Ah, now I'm saying let y represent the mass in pounds of a radioactive element whose half-life is 4,000 years. It says if there are 200 pounds of the element in an inactive mine, how much will still remain in a thousand years? Express your answer to three or more decimal place accuracy. Now, I need to also say to you that we should be using the basic exponential growth or uh, decay model. So with that, we're going to use our equation y equals to c e to the kt. This time, I need to actually solve for k. And I'm going to use this statement, the half-life is 4,000 years. Because if I start it with C, the half-life would mean that half of the substance remains after 4,000 years. So that means the Y value here, the amount of the substance, is 1 half C. And T is equal to 4,000 we can then go ahead and try to solve for k, just like the previous example. We'll get the natural log of 1 half divided by 4,000 will be equal to k. And that's great, but that still doesn't answer your question. Because now it says if there are 200 pounds of the element in an, in an inactive mine, okay, how much will still remain a thousand years later? So now what I'm saying is, I've given you a starting value of 200 pounds. So y equals to 200 pounds. e to the power of k, which we found as the natural log of 1 half over 4,000. And we're going to multiply this by t. But the question says, how much will still remain in 1,000 years? So really what I'm saying is, I know that this is going to be 1,000. What is the amount remaining? So find out y at the end. And then you can just plug this into your calculator. Uh, you can also simplify this, I guess. 1,000 divided by 4,000 is 1 quarter. So you can just write down 1 quarter of natural log of 1 half, like this. Remember, this is all an exponent. And if you do that, uh, I've done it already, and I got 168.179 pounds. So sometimes after solving for k, then you can go back and actually answer the question. All right. So remember how the title of this unit was uh, exponential growth and decay in other models? Well, here's the other model. Okay, <laughs> this other model is one where Newton. Do you remember Newton? Isaac Newton, guy of the apple. Bonk, right. Well, Newton actually came up with this thing called the law of cooling. And what it says is it states that the rate of change in the temperature of an object is proportional to, but not the object itself, but the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of its surroundings. And that should kind of make sense, right? If you have a cup of coffee and you let it cool, it will cool down to the temperature of the surroundings, which is room temperature. But it won't go below it, right? It'll just be at that temperature. So 
In this question I'm saying, suppose you have a metal figurine, it's heated to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it's brought into a room that has a constant temperature of 72. We did some data collection, and we found that the figurine cools from 150 degrees to 120 degrees in 15 minutes. And knowing that, the question is, how long will it take for the figurine to reach a temperature of 100? Okay. So I've already told you that Y is the temperature. So we need to express this final answer in terms of time, and it'll be rounded to the nearest minute. But once again, temperature, right? It's not the basic equation, so it's not dy dt equals ky anymore. Uh-uh. There's a slight change. Well, what is the change here? Because it's not proportional to the object itself, but the difference between the temperature and its surroundings, we need to then say it's k times y minus some temperature. Well, what temperature is the surroundings in this case? Ah, it's 72. So our equation has changed now. It's not just k times y, but k bracket y minus 72. And now we need to go ahead and solve for y. So we'll do the separating the variables again. So dy over y minus 72 equals to k times dt. After separating your variables, we need to anti-differentiate. Hopefully you see you get the natural log of y minus 72 equals to kt plus c. We will then e both sides to try to solve for y. And hopefully you'll see you get the absolute value of y minus 72 being equaling e to the kt times e to the c. And of course that e to the c with the absolute value will combine together into some crazy constant. I'll just call it c e to the kt. And notice now it's no longer y equals to c e to the kt, but y minus 72 equals to c e to the kt. Okay? And if you then want us to solve for y, we can then say y equals to c e to the kt plus 72. Now, we do need to solve for c, don't we? And so we have some initial condition. It says, Suppose the figurine is heated to 150 degrees Celsius, uh, 150 degrees Fahrenheit at t equals zero. So 150 equals to c e to the k times zero plus 72. E to the zero is always one, so c plus 72 equals to 150. So what do we know then? Aha, c must be equal to 78. Beautiful. And so therefore now what we have is y equals to 78 e to the kt plus 72 is my equation. But wait, we still have two variables on the right hand side. That's not good. So we need to find a way to solve for k. Well, that's where this other piece of information comes through. If it cools from 150 to 120 in 15 minutes. Ah, so what I'm saying is when 15 minutes have passed, that's T, it's cooled to 120. So let me now use this point. So I'm going to use the coordinate 15, 120 to solve for K. So 120 equals 78 E to the 15 T plus 72. We'll subtract 72 on both sides, divide both sides by... 78, so 48 divided by 78 equals e to the 15t. We'll then, of course, take the natural log of that. Now equal to 15t. And I'm running out of space, but you get the idea. Natural log of 48 over 78 divided by 15 equals to my t. <laughs> and if I really wanted to have a nice equation, then y equals to 78 e to the k, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said t, that was t, wasn't it? <laughs> that should be k, 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 I'm sorry, okay? e to the k, and my k value is natural log of 48 over 78 divided by 15 times t, that's all an exponent, plus 72. And this is the equation of this scenario. Whew. 
But unfortunately, you still haven't solved this question yet, because it did say how long will it take for the figurine to reach a temperature of 100? So now, I'm asking you to find... Whoa, what happened there? Find... T when Y equals to 100. And so now it's just doing some algebra. We'll plug in 100. And our goal here is to solve for T. 100 minus 72 is 28. 28 divided by 78 is what I have. That equals to E to the natural log of 48 over 78. Notice how I could have just rounded this, but I'm trying to keep all the things to get an exact answer here. Um, we will then take the natural log. Natural log of 28 over 78 equals then the natural log of 48 over 78 divided by 15t. We're going to solve for t, so it's just going to be now the natural log of 28 over 78 divided by the natural log of 48 over 78 over 15. And this is where I'm going to ask you to just go ahead and plug this into your calculator and find your answer to the nearest minute. And I've already done this already, and I've figured this out as 32 minutes. I hope you can do the same. All right. So, a little bit more complicated because in this case, we had a slight change in our basic law of exponential growth equation. This key statement that I've highlighted in yellow made things just a little bit more tricky. Alright, that's it for 7.2. You're two-thirds of the way done, Unit 7.